welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. Thank you for joining me again this week. I am so glad that you are here. So in this episode, this is kind of a two-parter from last week. So in last week's episode, I was talking about how the goal of your marketing isn't to prove how good you are at marketing, right? And this week, I want to continue that theme and talk about cutting through the noise of the digital marketing world and what you should really be focusing on if you want to improve the results you're getting from your marketing efforts. Okay, so I want to talk about what are the actual things that will move the needle for your business? And for me, these fall into three very distinct parts of the marketing journey. It begins with visibility or content. It's then your lead generation. What are you doing to actually generate leads that you can sell to? And then thirdly, it's about creating clients from those leads. How do we actually turn a perfect prospect into a perfect client. So that's what I want to talk about this week. And I've talked a lot about marketing recently. I think it's probably because we've got the upcoming retreat in October. So, I mean, my business, I don't go all out marketing 12 months of the year. That's not how my business is structured. When I've got a specific offer to market like the retreat, it brings it really to the forefront of my mind around how there is a real, I don't want to say process, it's because that's not the right word, but there's absolutely a roadmap that you can follow so that you're not leaving any opportunity unmaximized, right? And this kind of three tier strategy that I work from, I really, really recommend you adopt in your business because it helps you to see the intention behind every marketing activity that you do in your business. And that's really important because when you understand the intention behind a marketing strategy, then you will be able to implement it with much more clarity. A quick word on various different marketing strategies. This episode isn't going to be necessarily about which marketing strategy you should follow to do these three things, these three tiers. I was talking to a client today and I was kind of observing how marketing strategies really are like diets. I've said this before, probably on the podcast. Most of them work if you can stick to them long enough. And the problem is with marketing strategies, we tend to give ourselves very audacious goals for our marketing. And the problem comes when it's simply not sustainable for us. You know, we've given ourselves a a really complex strategy that has a thousand moving parts and requires us to be creating reams of content, posting frenetically on every social media platform known to man. Those kind of marketing strategies simply aren't sustainable. They're also not actually the strategies that will get you the best results. A lean marketing strategy, a rewilded strategy where you've cut away what doesn't belong to allow what does to thrive. Remember, that's how we talk about rewilding our business. That is what's going to get you the best results. Welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I'm Jill Mokes, and I am obsessed with cutting through the noise when it comes to growing your business. Each week, via intimate coaching conversations and inspirational stories, I share what it really takes to get the results you want in a way that feels right to you. I am all about attracting higher ticket opportunities, building authentic relationships, and creating the abundant, full-fat version of your dream business. 
I mean, how many of us have beavered away creating a light version of what we really want? The thing is, I honestly believe when you're outstanding at what you do, there is no limit to what you can achieve. So, are you ready to put our heads together and make it happen? Let's go. I want to start off with visibility because that's the first level. So some people call this awareness. I call it visibility and this is really your original content. So this might be a YouTube channel. It might be like me, my visibility platform, my content platform is this podcast. I do write a blog, but I'm a little bit sporadic with it. I do create content in other places. But for me, my primary content platform is this podcast. Yours might be, like I say, it might be a YouTube channel. It might be a blog. It might be a podcast. It might be a substack. It might be writing on Medium. Whatever it is, it's where you put out your original content. And really, this is the linchpin of your marketing, because this is where you can get really strategic about sharing content that your ideal clients are going to be attracted by. You're also going to be able to talk to their pain points. You're going to be able to talk to their desires. And we know we may not like this to still be true. Lots of people try and tell you this isn't true or tell you that there's something icky about prodding a pain point. That's not true. I want you to really hear me on this one. It isn't true. If you are a coach or a consultant whose job is to help people, you need to understand what their pain points are or you can't help them. And for them to understand that you are someone who can help them, they need to know that you understand what those pain points are. So please don't listen to this new wave ideology that you shouldn't be talking about people's pain points or desires. In my opinion, that is kind of crazy, kind of doesn't make any sense. But um, there you go. We get these new messages coming out of the woodwork every now and then. So what I want to talk about is when it comes to creating this content, I want you to focus. So again, this this episode is all about what you need to focus on to improve your marketing for each of these tiers, visibility, lead generation and sales. And for visibility, your focus needs to be on quality content. Okay, I genuinely believe that this year we're going to see a real shift, a real shift in the digital landscape where consumers, so your ideal clients, those are who you want to be the consumers of your content, they are going to start consuming less. I can see this happening already and I think people are starting to heed the advice of coaches like me I'm afraid sorry you can blame people like me who say to people you know start to curate your feed stop listening to everyone and anyone find a handful of valuable sources of information and double down on those stop facing this tsunami of information and overconsumption And I think that's what we're going to see a shift towards. I think people are starting to listen to that message. And so what that means to us as content creators is that we need to focus on creating content that is absolutely above average. It's got to be above average. Average and below is going to be cold, if you like, by this new wave of curation and new desire to consume less. So you need to be consistently creating above average content and it needs to be engaging. It needs to be absolutely on point as far as messaging is concerned. If your original content platform is a newsletter, for example, then 
that newsletter has to be one of those newsletters that people are absolutely waiting to drop into their email box each week, right? If you create a podcast, my goal with this podcast is to have people hitting that follow button so that it's automatically downloaded and waiting for them every Monday morning. Because I do that with the podcast I love. So that's my goal is that people are doing that with this podcast. And for me to expect that to happen or to want that to happen, I need to be really satisfied that I'm giving you powerful, useful content. And sometimes powerful and useful, it it doesn't always mean it has to be deadly serious and educational. And Entertaining content is valuable content. Right? Some of my episodes are way more lighthearted than others, and that's okay. But at the crux of it is, I want it to be quality content that you like, that you engage with. At the end of the day, I'm creating this content as a podcaster because I want you who are listening to be saying to yourself, Jill talks a lot of sense. She's probably a pretty decent business coach. Maybe I'm going to reach out to her. Let me have a quick look at her website. Maybe I'm going to book a breakthrough session with her. Maybe I'm going to hire her as my coach. Maybe I'm going to enroll in one of her courses. Maybe I'm going to join her mastermind. Maybe I'm going to go on retreat with her in October. This is the whole point that we have a visibility platform is to really attract the people that would make great clients for us and then to get them to take action. Number one, that high quality content is what gets people coming back for more, clearly, right? If you put out rubbish content after rubbish content, no one is coming back to listen to that. No one's coming back to watch that YouTube channel again. They're going to unsubscribe from the emails. It's obvious, right? And so it's really obvious that in a world where people are getting more discerning about the content that they're consuming, that we really start focusing on the quality of what we're putting out there. So that's the visibility part. And I touched on it just now, you know, the visibility content is really to start generating leads, to start getting people to identify themselves as someone who would benefit from working with you. So the awareness, the visibility is the first phase. The second phase is lead generation. The main thing I want you to focus on and understand here is that there is often a fairly significant lag between someone raising their hand and opting in for your freebie, joining your email list, uh, subscribing to your newsletter, following your podcast, you know, whatever it is that you ask them to do to take action. For most people, that will be to get them on an email list because we all know, don't we, that if you've been listening to me uh, for any amount of time, you know that your email list is your own real estate. It's not like social media where that could change it any day. Once you have someone's email, once they've entrusted you with their email address, you then are partnered in a relationship They can contact you, you can contact them. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes it feels like you're just blasting out emails. But one of the goals of nurturing an email list, actually, is to start getting it to feel a little bit more two-way. And that's something we'll come on to in another episode. I'm going to do an episode that really goes deep into growing an email list. And I think I might, actually, I'm just thinking this now, I might do that as like a a kind of like a masterclass episode. So maybe we'll do a special bonus episode that's a bit longer because that's quite a big subject. Uh, I'd quite like to do that in some detail. So if that sounds like something you would like me to do, because I think that has changed over the years too. You know, from the early days of building an email list, it is different now. Marketing is more, in some ways, it's more sophisticated because there are lots of complex tools and strategies. In some ways, I think, for me, we need to come back and rewild that concept a little bit too. So if you'd be interested in my rewilded version of building an email list, maybe drop me an email, info at jillmokes.com and let me know because I think it's something that there is a need for out there because in terms of lead generation, 
The people on your email list are your warm leads. They are your warm audience. They are people who resonated with some content that you put out there and raised their hand and said, yes, I like what you're saying. I want to hear a bit more. So the first thing is, like I say, remembering that there can be a lag between them joining your list and then becoming a client. And so that's why we talk about nurturing an email list. Sometimes when you have a business model that calls for these very frenetic live launches, which are all about getting lots of leads into the pot very quickly with, I don't know, a live event or something like that, or a challenge or something. I think what can happen there is that people are kind of swept in. They are given a choice to either buy or not buy of whatever it is you're offering. And then they're almost left a little stagnant on the list if you're not doing a good job of nurturing them. So I think keeping in your mind the fact that if someone has raised their hand to join your email list, they did that for a reason. They like what you said and they want to hear a bit more of it. So don't be scared to I'm not, now don't get this wrong. I'm not suggesting that every email you send your email list is promoting what you do. Absolutely not. Nurturing your email list is about giving them more and more tastes of that quality content. So maybe, for example, if your platform is a podcast or is a YouTube channel, maybe from time to time you email your email list with a follow-up thought of something that came to you when you put out that episode, perhaps, but something that makes them feel like an insider in your world. I think that's kind of nurturing your list. And of course, it does mean that you can, when the time is right, promote offers to your list. But that isn't all the time, and it isn't a case of if someone doesn't buy straight away, they're never going to buy. And this is a mistake I think a lot of people make. Everyone that I have ever worked with, I think, yeah, I can't think of anyone this doesn't apply to. We all, because it includes me, we all want results quicker than results come. And I think it's partly that's human nature but also it's partly to do with the disingenuous messaging that you get around the flashing dollar sign marketing that we see online, like scale your business to seven figures in seven days, that kind of thing, you know, the stuff that we all hate. But I think what it does is it does often give us unrealistic expectations and actually building a really solid, sustainable online business as a coach or a consultant where you've got a good steady stream of prospects coming in, leads are joining your email list. It's really important to understand that some of those people joining your list will stay on that list for a couple of years before they become a client. So Really bear that in mind when you're writing your, for example, if you have an opt-in freebie, I don't know, you might have a, uh, like I have the Money Mindset ebook. If someone opts in for that, yes, they're going to get your three email sequence or whatever, but just bear in mind that they are still potential clients, even if they don't work with you straight away after to doing that. They're still leads. They are still leads. And quite often, they're going to be there for a couple of years. And then they're going to decide to work with you. That's really common. I mean, luckily, that's not always the case. Of course, of course not. Some people will immediately know that they're a absolutely wholehearted yes. They're going to want to work with you straight away. But I just want you to understand the power of your email list in terms of constantly nurturing leads and giving them opportunities to take things to the next level, which is that next conversion place of prospect to client. So as you're nurturing them on your email list, you're building the trust and eventually you are going to get the opportunity to convert them from prospect to client. And so now we come to the third phase or the third tier, which is the 
sales part of the process. So this is, okay, someone has been captivated by your copy. They've raised their hand. You know, they've clicked. They've followed that call to action. They've raised their hand. They're on your list. You're nurturing them. And now, how are you going to create an environment that makes it easy for those ideal prospects to become clients? This is what I want you to focus on. Too many entrepreneurs actually make it quite difficult for someone to become a client. This is crazy, right? I really see this a lot with higher ticket offers. And often there's a few reasons for that. One is that they are very scared of becoming overly promotional. But there's a really fine balance between not being overly promotional and not promoting, not actually sharing with people what it is you do. So you've got to find the right balance. Yes, it should be, you should be talking on your landing pages about your ideal clients and about the transformation, etc. But also you need to make it clear how they actually buy what you do. Book a call with you to talk about it. Make it really easy. Make sure it's a really simple button where they just click and book the call. Make sure there's plenty of room always left clear in your calendar for them to be able to get a call with you in a timely way. Don't put barriers in the way of clients who want to take that next step. If it is a high ticket offer, often it it will be via a call. And we know that the best way to convert those clients who are having a breakthrough session or discovery call with you, really as a coach or a consultant, is to give them a taste of what it's like to work with you. So that call is your golden opportunity to give that ideal prospect a little window, a little view into how it would make them feel if they got to work with you, how transformational it would be. So um, this is another example of where I just really want you to ignore some of the messaging that I see around at the moment, which is you have to stop giving away any of your time for free. Don't give away at the farm on a discovery call because then they won't be motivated to hire you or work with you please don't buy into that it isn't true every single client I've ever signed to work with me and I'm a high ticket one-to-one business coach every client that I've ever signed up to work with me I have always coached for at least an hour sometimes more on a call before they've even begun to think about whether they want to hire me I want to give them that time because I know that that is my sales process. I don't have to memorize any cheesy sales spiels or I don't have to try and in my head follow some kind of sales strategy flow to the call that, you know, old fashioned sales uh, manuals would tell you. I don't have to do any of that because If you give someone a really powerful coaching experience or consulting experience on the call, you know, they're going to want more. That's all you need to do. They will want more. They see the value. It's completely transparent. They absolutely see the value. That's that last part is the focus on don't be over promotional, but don't stop promoting. You've got to be able to give clients the opportunity to buy from you. It's a bit easier. If you have a lower ticket offer, like maybe it's a digital course or a book or something with a lower price tag, uh, because you can pepper around those buy now buttons. But that would be a great example of every now and then reminding your email list, you know, those people who put their hand up and joined your email list, whenever that was, the time might be right today for them to take action and buy that so every now and then you're nurturing the list with valuable content and then but you're also promoting offers you're peppering that through your email marketing strategy okay one thing we haven't touched on today actually is uh thinking about it is paid advertising and i just want to really clear something up about paid advertising Can you grow a coaching or consulting practice without paid advertising? Yes, you absolutely can. And I know that because I did. Does paid advertising always work? No, no, it doesn't. 
but there's usually one very good reason why paid advertising doesn't work. And that is because people think that paid advertising does all of the work for them. And that isn't true. Paid advertising will only amplify the results you're already getting. So if you have a marketing strategy that doesn't work, There is no amount of paid advertising, i.e. driving more traffic, whether that's driving traffic to your visibility platform and your your content platform or driving traffic to your opt-in page for lead generation or driving traffic to a sales page for sales conversions. If you don't already have strategies in place that work for those three phases, those three tiers, then no amount of paid advertising will make them work. So I really want you to think very carefully about that. Don't ever turn to paid advertising because your advertising as it stands at the moment isn't working because that is illogical. Paid advertising only ever amplifies what you're already doing. So if what you're already doing is already seeing a trickle of audience building, email list building, few sales are coming through, it's working, then you can amplify those results with paid advertising, absolutely. Then it becomes law of numbers. And certainly with lower ticket offers anyway, you can absolutely amplify results with paid advertising. If at some point through that roadmap of visibility, lead generation and sales, even if only one of those parts isn't working, then Paid advertising won't work. You need to have all three of those phases working before you try and amplify the results with paid ads. Just really, really wanted to uh, point that out. And again, paid advertising is something maybe we'll cover in another episode. Quite getting into these educational episodes at the moment. I'm really, I'm loving the podcast at the moment because I feel like I'm in a bit of a flow with... A really nice rhythm with interviews and solo episodes. And I love that. So think about that. When it comes to your content platform, think about what you want yours to look like. You know, do you want to be solely responsible for putting out the quality content? Or do you want to kind of partner up with people sometimes and do joint episodes or maybe get someone to do a guest blog for you if blogging is your thing? Have a think about that. Substack as well. Substack is great at offering, you know, ways of doing um, kind of collaborations and cross-posting. So hmm, something to think about. In summary, the things to focus on. That was the title. I've just realised that was the title of the episode. (laughs) What to focus on to improve your marketing. Well, I want you to get very clear that on those three phases and what those look like in your business. So by now, you should really understand what those three phases are, visibility, lead generation and sales. And I want you to look at all of the activity that you do in your business and see where it fits under. What's your visibility strategy? In other words, you know, where is your original content going? Which platform? And then lead generation. How are you getting people who are aware of you now via your visibility platform? How are you getting them to raise their hand and hop on your email list or DM you or however it is that you count lead generation? I'm all about growing the email list, but I know some people prefer to maybe on social media, they like to get people to just start a conversation with them in the DMs. That's absolutely valid too, if that's your thing. Social media is not really my a thing as much, but absolutely. Social media is a great tool for sharing that original content, that visibility platform content. I always share the episodes of this podcast on social media. So social media has its place. You just need to understand where that place sits in this three-tiered kind of roadmap, if you like. And social media sits in the lead generation phase because social media is where you're sharing that original content and you're asking people to raise their hands. You're asking people to identify themselves as a potential client for you by opting in somehow or taking some kind of action, following some kind of call to action. 
So visibility platform is the first focus. What is it in your business or what do you want it to be? What's your plan to have? a? Maybe you don't have a visibility platform at the moment and you've been putting you know, all your time and effort into the lead generation part, maybe on social media. And, you know, maybe you've been putting quality content out, but it's all on social media, and you don't have your own visibility platform. And I would really counsel against doing that. I think we all know why, you know, you've heard it a million times, it's you don't own those leads, you need to find a way to get them off of those platforms and onto your own email list. And that's your lead generation. And then sales. How are you making it easy for clients to buy from you? What's your sales strategy? Is it to book a call with you? Is it simply to visit a landing page and click buy and pay you? Is it to fill out an application form to have a call with you? Whatever it is, don't make it difficult for the client to understand what that process is. Make sure it's really crystal clear what you're selling and how they can buy it. Because sometimes we get so caught up in that fear of being overly promotional or talking about ourselves too much that we go way too far the other way and suddenly we're not actually telling anyone what we do and how they can benefit from it. Okay. Well, I hope that has been an interesting and a valuable episode for you. I feel like a teacher today. Sometimes I really like it when I do these teaching episodes. Let me know if you like them, because I would do. I don't think we'd want it every week, would we? No, sometimes it needs to be a bit lighter. I agree. Do you love the way that I can have an entire conversation with you, even though I can't hear anything any of you are saying? It's a skill, trust me. I used to do it on people's answer phones back in the days of answer phones. Nowadays, no one leaves a message, obviously. But yeah, I used to be able to have a full-blown conversation with an answer phone. I think that's what stood me in good stead for podcasting, really. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me as always. And now I'm going to just give a quick demo of lead generation. So, this has been a valuable piece of content that I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope that In curating your feed, you've decided that you want to keep me in it as a trusted source of valuable information when it comes to growing your coaching or consulting business. What I would also like you to do is to take advantage of one of the other ways you can get value from me. The first one is if you visit my website, there is a Fix Your Money Mindset freebie ebook that you can sign up for. That will take you to a form. You will put in your name and email address. I will then have your name and email address on my email list so that I can send you other valuable stuff, build trust with you, and one day you might become a paying client of mine. See how that works. Don't you love a bit of meta transparency? I do. And then the other option, if you feel like you're that little bit further down the line in trusting me, and that's the beauty of having your own content platform like a podcast is that some of you listening will feel like you know me already because you hear my voice each week and part of the beauty of that is that I can now say to you listen if you already feel like I might be the coach for you or that one of my coaching offers might be right for you then you can apply for a call with me it is an application only process because I think I mentioned earlier, I don't charge, but I do give a good hour at least of business coaching on that call because I want you to get a taste of what it's like to work with me. Does that mean that some people will book a call with no intention of working with me? Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of put an application in place because I know the kind of clients for whom I get the best results. So this just helps me really identify who is going to benefit from one of these breakthrough sessions with me. So if you go to jillmokes.com forward slash apply, that's where you can perform and then you'll get a little email saying, yay, we would love you to book a call and you'll get a link to book the call. So I hope that is crystal clear what you need to do there. I think it's quite easy. You go to jillmokes.com forward slash apply. You fill out the form. We email you a link to book a call. You and I get on a call. You get a 
take advantage of business coaching from moi. And then at the end of the call, if you would like to find out more about working with me, I will be happy to have that conversation with you. If you don't want to, you've just had a really great hour of value add coaching that should move the needle a little in your business. So that really is a win win, right? Okay. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me this week. And I hope you will join me again next week. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that getting our heads together this week has filled your mind with what's possible. If you love the show, would you do me a massive favour, please? Would you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts? It would really help me put more heads together, reach more ears and expand more minds. Until next week, bye for now. Bye for now.